Hello gamers, Mage Hammer here for another edition of tonight on Mage Hammer's Game Table, where tonight I'm continuing my solo RPG session featuring the basic fantasy role-playing game 4th edition rule set. My heroes, Londra Rusher, Ketho Misty Hollow, halfling magic user, Lalandra is a human fighter, Thardor Anvil Shield, Dwarf Cleric of Kathor, and Dark Shadow Mysterious Elf are escorting their patron, Miranda Hall Heathcroft, and her manservant, Jeeves, to Tranestall. Over the past several months, the heroes have been on a mission for Miranda Hall to recover the sh shards of the Shattered Crown and of Tranestall and the Scepter of Might. And Miranda Hall wants them to be recovered so she can take them back to Tranestall, where they rightly belong. <clears throat> because a usurper, an assassin named um, Grand the Petty, assassinated King Calibrand years ago. And then escaped, shattered the crown, escaped with the crown, and hid the shards of the shattered crown throughout the wilderness of the Swordlands, which is to the west of Transtall. Transtall is here off the east, off the map. Our heroes, hired by Miranda Heathcroft, have gone all over the Swordlands into many different delves and retrieved all six shards of the Shattered Crown, as well as the mighty Scepter of Ru the scepter of Might, which was the symbol of office of the Transtalls. They found that last episode in uh, Horn Talor's vault, a dwarf king. They had solved a riddle to find it. And with the help of a Dwarven Sage, they made their way there with the help of teleportation rings uh, provided to them by, by Miranda Hall Heathcroft. They were able to teleport close to the place, find it after a journey, make their way into the vault using the talisman key, which protected them from its guardians and also from its um, traps and it's opened all the doors. So our party had no problem going into the strange vault built by the Mad Dwarf King, bringing out the scepter where Gron the Petty had hidden it, and bringing it. And then they were ambushed by a band of archivists on their way out. Archivists feel that all artifacts uh, of history need to be taken and hidden away or used against humanity. It all depends on who you ask. And the party was in dire straits and used their teleportation rings to teleport back to... Argos, where they contacted Randall Heathcroft. She came, and she has asked and hired them to take her to Tranestall and escort her and the Shards and the Scepter to Tranestall, where she will pay them in addition to what she has already paid them. They have left their gems in the vault at the Argosian uh, Adventurers Guild. They're not carrying that with them, but they are each carrying a piece of the Shard, and I believe... Um, um, Miranda Hall is carrying, or not Miranda Hall, uh, Lalandra is carrying the scepter, and uh, Thardor and Ketho are carrying extra shards. So they have two shards each. All of them have at least one shard. They are carrying them it's just so that they don't put all their eggs in one basket, so to speak. And they are making their way down the trade road from Argos to Tranestall. Now, this trade road is well guarded, and there are Argosian uh, wayfare stations at day's travel throughout the entire journey. So, Except for the very cold weather, it is currently, um, it is a relatively easy journey. They make their way to Kellen's Cloak. They spend uh, a night in an inn there. Uh, they keep watch, though, because they know that they are being tracked by the archivists. And after several, you know, basically a f 10 days journey, uh, they've come to Kellen's Cloak. Um, nothing happens. Nothing happens at Kellen's Cloak. And then they are about four days out of Kellen's Cloak, getting close to Sentinel Keep, which is a Tranestallian way station, when um, out from behind some trees steps a number of people. And at the lead of them is a very familiar face. A very familiar face. Well, my friends, my friends, my most excellent friends. Oh, here we are at last, face to face. Well, what? Dark Shadow's like, Mycroft. Yes, Dark Shadow, where, 
so good to see you. It's so wonderful to see you. So, where are our companions? Our mutual friends? Where are they? We'd like to see them. Whoa. Uh, Jeeves is shuffling. Lalandra jumps on. What is going on? <gasps> Mycroft. Yes, yes, my dear Lalandra. Oh, there's Thador and oh, Ketho. How are you all? Uh, we're doing great. What are you, what are you doing, Mycroft? Well, you see, uh, I need to speak with your patron. Uh, why? Well, there's some things we have to clear up. You see, she is not who she says she is. Uh, what? Yes, yes, I'm afraid uh, she has been lying to you. Well, I don't know really what lies she's told you, but I'm sure she's lying to you. She is a liar, after all. What are you talking about? She gets steps down, comes out from behind Lalandra. Well, if it isn't James Mycroft. Hello, Miranda Holm. Took me a while to figure out who you were. Or should I say... Mora. <laughs> so you figured out my secret at last. Oh, yes, yes. I had a feeling you were behind this, but I couldn't prove it. But my friends here, the Argosian Wayfarers, they've been quite helpful in gaining what is rightfully the crown of Tranestals. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, no, it is not. It is my grandfather's Grand the Petty. What? What? What, what, did, what did you say? Yes, you fools. <sighs> I guess it's too late to hide it all. You see, my grandfather was Grand the Petty, and who do you think he gave the treasures to from the Torn or Horn Towers vault? Me. That's where I got the map, you fools. But I suppose it's too late to keep the secrets now. Yes, my goddess Kiva has showed me the way. I must return the crown and take the throne for myself, for Grand the Petty is the true heir to the throne. I'm afraid that is not true, Mora, and you know it. He is an assassin and a ne'er-do-well, and myself and the agents of the crown here are going to take the shards of the crown and the scepter and return them to the proper authorities, where it will be revered as an artifact of our realm and also will serve as a reminder for the treachery of evildoers. I'm afraid I cannot allow that to happen. I am too close now to having my results. And Lalandra is just sitting there going, what is, what is going on? I, I don't, I can't. And then, um, she, she uh, Mora grabs the talisman key from around Lalandra's neck and uh, then, with the other hand, hurls a bunch of what look like cogs, and they land at various places, and sprouting up from those cogs are the automatons that they found in the vault of Horntalor. I'm afraid you are going to have to hand me over the shards. I am too close now. While these creatures, these guardians of mine, take care of these agents of the quote-unquote crown of Tranestal. I'm afraid that in the name of the king, queen, you must hand over everything. I'm afraid not. Get them! And the guardians start to march towards the agents of the crown. And, um... <laughs> Lalandra's like, what, what is going on? I'm sorry, Lalandra. Sorry to have fooled you so much. I need that scepter now, as well as the shard that you carry. I, I don't think so. I need to figure this all out. What is going on? So, what? I, I, Ketho's like, I, I don't know. And Jeeves, um, Jeeves is like, I'm afraid, good elf, I'm going to have to ask you to hand over the shards you carry. The shard you carry. I don't think so. No, I'm afraid I insist. Um, and he, all right, so it's a lot for the characters to process. As the automatons begin to march towards the agents of the crown, the launderer's like, I can't believe we were so foolish. 
so stupid. I will never give you this scepter or shard until I know the truth of it all. Well, then I'm afraid I'm going to have to try to take it from you. And Mora casts a spell quickly at um, her, at Lalandra. Lalandra has to make a saving throw. And she fails and she freezes up. What the is... And then the automatons are already in combat with the agents of the Crown of Tranistal and Mycroft. And there's spells being cast and arrows flying and... And I'm going to roll initiative for my people while the battle of the automaton versus the agents of the crown of Tranistal happened. All right, so my crew, I think I feel like I'm missing. Nope, this is it. Dark Shadow goes on seven. Uh, Lalandra on two. Ketho on four. Thardor on one. And Mora and Jeeves go on with Lalandra. All right, so while the rest of the battle is going on, so Dark Shadow is like, and she stabs Jeeves because he's reaching for her, and she misses, and then she tumbles out, and he doesn't have a weapon in hand, and if he did, he would have been able to get a free shot. So she tumbles out and rolls over here and comes up on her hands in a hero pose. Ketho is like, ah, uh, and he casts Mirror Image. So that's a second level spell slot. And four images appear. And then he moves over here to hide behind the tree, taking his shard with him. And then um, Lalandra and Mora. Mora suddenly is wielding two swords. And she, uh, she, well, no, she takes the scepter. That's right. I'm sorry. She paralyzed Lalandra. So she takes the scepter. She takes the shard. That's her whole action. And then um, Jeeves cast magic missile at um, dark shadow and two magic missiles fly out and she takes six and four ten damage from that those magic missiles Ugh. and then um, then Thardor he charges at uh, Mora and attacks her and misses. All right, initiative. Okay, so Ketho on a seven, Mora and Jeeves on a three, Dark Shadow on a seven, uh, Lalandra on a three, and Thardor on a four. All right. So, Lalandra going simultaneously, but she is... Oh, yeah, I could have her make a saving throw. I think I'll make her saving throw this round to try to break free of that hold. Um, so, Dark Shadow uh, rolls, comes up, fires an arrow, and it goes behind that tree. An arrow at Jeeves, and she misses with a two, plus three, or plus four, six misses. That's her action. Ketho, he cast magic missile he gets two magic missiles now as well and he casts two magic missiles at jeeves up there on the thing and then oh nice 14 damage in fact he doesn't quite know how many hit points jeeves has but he might use some dice to help bring him down okay so um let me write down jeeves's hit points mora's hit points and uh, G's has, <laughs> let's say that many, but now he takes that much damage and um, he's gonna use luck dice to bring him down. And that is, that is definitely enough to bring a Jeeves down. Uh, Jeeves goes flat face down, boom, smashes his face on the ground. He is out. And Ketho goes back behind the tree. All right. So those are some effective magic missiles. All right, so next up is uh, Thardor. He takes a swing at Mora. You treacherous witch! And he misses. <laughs> oh, so anticlimactic. So Mora... Um, Mora is trusting in her hold, and so she is going to stab Thardor. I'm giving her two attacks. Um, and I think I'm going to house rule this on the fly. Uh, two attacks is uh, main hand is um, minus, we'll say minus two, and offhand is minus four. 
And then um, with her bonuses, we'll just say that Jake's out. And so she gets two attacks, at no pluses. And she does not hurt Thardor. He catches it on a shield. All right. So then um, probably should have her cast a spell too. I'll do that next time. And then Lalandra, I'm going to give her a saving throw to try to break free because she's so enraged at the betrayal. And she breaks free but is unable to do anything else this round. All right, so that brings us to initiative as the battle continues against the automatons. Let's see, we've got two, four, six. So we got 10 automatons. Let's see if, um, let's see if any of them, let's see, uh, we'll do this. One has fallen. Okay, I'll say this one. One has fallen so far. Um, and of our troop, the crown agents, uh, none of them have fallen yet. All right, initiative. All right, so six for Ketho, two for Thardor, three for Lalandra, five for Mora, and three for Dark Shadow. Um... Ketho decides to help out over here and unleashes two magic missiles at this automaton that is fighting uh, his ally here, Crown Agent. Five, seven damage, not enough, but he's adding to the to the battle. And then um, we move on to Mora. So Mora tries to cast... Um, She's going to cast Spiritual Hammer to attack Thardor as well as her uh, her two attacks as, as well. Or we'll have her cast the spell. That'll be her action. So the hammer tries to slam down on Thardor and misses with a natural one. But she uses a slot. And then um, next up is Dark Shadow. He's going to attack her from behind. She is aware that he is there, but she's not 100% aware of exactly. So I'm going to give her sneak attack on this first attack her short sword and she gets she definitely hits and she does six damage to Mora Mora and Mora um, has the scepter and has a shard uh, Lalandra hey you treacherous witch and she uh, having shaken off the spell effect attacks and hits Mora for six more damage and then um Thardor takes a swing as well, and he misses. Okay. Uh, then we have... How many more? Do we have any more? Two more automatons fall. And see if any of our agents have fallen. Not yet. They are doing quite well. All right. So... Initiative. Ooh, Moro gets a... Th six as does ketho and dark shadow on a four and lalandra on a four and thardor on a four so uh mora says well at least i have the scepter and the shard and she says a word and she disappears they see a quick flash on her ring finger and she is teleported away no no, you won't, you treacherous. And But the automatons continue the fight. Ketho sends two more magic missiles at this one. Three and six, nine. That's enough to drop that one in addition to the damage that Ranger has done to it. And then um, the rest of them. So they, they turn on these automatons to help the agents of the crown and they attack. Um, Thardor attacks. He hits one. Nine damage. Uh, it has been injured, so it goes down previously. And he moves up to attack another one. And then, um, then, yeah. Did I have Lalandra attack one? No, I don't think so. Lalandra attacks, and she hits, and only does four damage. Not enough to, she wounds it, but not enough. And then electricity is flying everywhere. Um, this magic user has gone down from the attacks of this uh, creature, as has this archer. And they have now turned their attention towards over here. Um, I 
this fighter is going to help this. Mycroft has sent out a few magic missiles of his own. And now it is initiative. And this will be the crown agents. And this will be the bad guys. Okay, bad guys go on five. Ketho on seven. Dark Shadow on five. The agents on two. Lalandra on three. And Thardor on one. Okay, so Ketho unleashes a couple of magic missiles at these two over here. And he does uh, seven and four, 11 damage. And he uh, takes one down that had been wounded. So the magic missiles take that one down. And then this one turns and fires off electricity at him and it takes down one of his mirror images. Zzzzt. Whoa, what a trick. I'm fascinated. And uh, this one unleashes uh, electricity on this cleric and does this much damage. The cleric stands tall but takes a brunt. The other ones attack. They attack this guy. The soldier misses. Attacks the other soldier, misses. And then um, the the party attacks. The agents attack. Mycroft sends a magic, two magic, three, three magic missiles at, um, no, two magic missiles at this guy. And does six, four, ten. Takes it down. And he kind of steps aside. And then um, the the elf skirmisher misses. The cleric attacks and misses. The fighter attacks, and he hits big time. And he does. Uh, he's got two handed weapon there, but it's a D eight plus seven. Plus that's already wounded. He takes down that automaton and moves over to help with this one. Um, this soldier. Attacks the one that he and Thardor are fighting. She and Thardor are fighting. And misses. And then um, I think that's it for those. Oh, the ranger. Ugh, it comes in and attacks the, the automaton from behind with two attacks. And misses both. And now Thardor attacks uh, that one. And he hits and drops it. It's already been wounded. And that brings us to initiative. So the agents on two, Thardor on one again, Lalandra on four, Ketho on three. That's uncharacteristic. And then the uh, automatons on four and Dark Shadow on four. So a lot of on fours here. So basically, we're going to have lots of attacks on automaton. We'll see if the automaton hits anybody. And it does hit the soldier and does a D8 damage which is not enough to take the soldier down, but it definitely crunches. And after all the attacks that everybody has, they take down the final automaton. Ketho is fascinated by the automatons. I need to study these things. They are wonderful. Well, Mycroft, you are who you said you were. Oh no, I quite am. I am definitely an actor um, for Quill Quiverstaff. He does exist. Um, I just, uh, you know, I have other interests as well. The interests of the crown at heart. But enough about me. So, I don't blame you for being duped by Mora. It took me a while to figure out exactly what was going on as well. I couldn't understand your role. I wasn't sure if you were in on it or not. But, um, yes. I'm so glad that uh, you, you had been duped by her. Uh, I don't think I like the sound of that. No, no, I, I bet you don't. Um, yes, indeed, it, it was uh, quite quite a harrowing experience um, for you, I bet. But at the same time, you have also done the Crown of Tranestal a great deed. You have found the lost shards of our Shattered Crown, one of our national treasures. Yes, and unfortunately, Mora was able to get two of the shards and the scepter and escape with them. No, no matter, no matter. You have the rest of those shards, and I would love for you to hand them over so we can take them back to Tranestal and put them in the rightful place, and we will continue to hunt Mora and find her and bring the other two shards and the scepter back to Tranestal where they belong. Her grandfather was a quite evil person. Pure greed is all that he was interested in. 
<sighs> my friends, my friends, my dearest friends, you will, of course, be compensated by the crown of Tranestall for all that you have done. The money that Mora has given you is blood money, gotten from Horn Tower's vaults, the treasures that she sold off and bought in gems and jewels. Uh, uh, but, you know, finders keepers? Oh, very well. Uh, let's consider that your paper. Oh, no, not that easy, Mycroft. You owe us. We expect more. All right, very well, very well. The queen herself has authorized me to present you with treasures. Um, I'm going to provide you with uh, enough coinage to pay. Uh, how does, uh, what was, um, what was Mora paying you? Uh, a thousand. No! Uh, Dark Shadow steps on his toe really quick. She was paying us 2,000 each to take her there and back. Oh. 2,000. Hmm. For each of you. Tell you what. We'll give you 3,000 each and on the crown for what you have done. We are also going to make you we are going to make you um, Lords of the Throne. That sounds pretty good. What's involved with that? Oh, not much except for a name. However, your names will be added to the roll and you shall be able to come freely and go freely in Tranestall at all you would like. And the money will be shipped to you soon. Uh, it, do, would you like it in gems or would you like it in coinage? Um, I think I would like it in both, says Ketho. Very well. And we can see meet you at the Argosian... Uh, we'll deliver to the Argosian Adventurers Guild? Yes, that will be acceptable. <sighs> Look, we're sorry we were duped so easily. Like I said, friends, my friends, my dearest friends, you have actually done the crown a favor. And the crown does not forget. So, keeping that in mind... Oh, I must... Yes, the cleric has returned with... Has revived these two. They were shocked when he has healed them. Do you require any healing? Um, no, I suppose not. Well, I need some. Oh, very well. The cleric walks over and cures her wounds. Well, I suppose this is where we part ways. I'll let you take her carriage and horses back to Argos, and uh, we shall continue on to Tranestall. And so they hand over the shards uh, to to them to the agents of the crown, and then they take Jeeves's body with them. So, what's going to happen to Jeeves's body? Oh, we're, we're going to raise him from the dead, and then he is going to. Um, he is going to stand trial and more than likely be found guilty and then beheaded. Uh, okay. Yes, yes, Tranestallian justice. So, well, without further ado, thank you so much for all that you have done. And once again, the crown, the queen, her majesty, thanks you. And until next time, hopefully, if our paths cross, we cross as friends. But I'm coming back in, after the winter and I'm putting on a show in Argos. Quill Quizzer's staff has been asked by the Lord Mayor to come. So come and see me. I'll buy you a drink. Or you'll buy me a drink. Or whatever. So until next time, friends, farewell. And may all your travels be safe. And with that, James Mycroft turns, the agents turn, and they start disappearing back down the road towards Sentinel Keep. Ugh. Wow. That's a lot to take in. Yes, indeed. Well... Let's get us home, get back to the guild. A bit disappointed in all that, uh, being fooled so tricked so easily. Yes, yes, quite, quite, quite disappointing. But you know what? That's okay. I think we've had a grand adventure regardless. And look, we're all whole, we're all alive, right, Thardor? Watch it, halfling. <laughs> oh, yes. Hey, Thardor, why don't you sing us a song as we transport ourselves to Argos? Well, to Kellen's cloak first. A oh, song, you say? I think I will. And so he goes on to sing all the way to Kellen's Cloak. And they get there, bed down, have a good night. And then they make their journey back to Argos and find themselves in the Argosian Adventurers Guild, sitting around a table, waiting until the next adventure comes their way. Well, gamers, thank you so much for coming on this journey with me. That's the end of this story.
hopefully you enjoyed it. Wonder if you saw what was coming, coming. Uh, let me know in the comments. Let me know what you think of the ending of it in the comments. Um, sorry for the two short episodes. I really didn't want to make them all one big episode. I kind of wanted to break it apart. I wanted to have a cliffhanger. Um, so that's why I divided them into shorter episodes. Hopefully you can forgive me that. Um, but until next time, I hope you come back for my next adventures and we'll never know where they're going to lead. I will guarantee though, they will involve these characters uh, the next time I run a basic fantasy solo RPG session. And uh, based on my plans as of right now, as of the filming this, I think I'm going to explore some miniature wargaming again on the channel. And then I'm gonna go back, and I'm gonna formulate a new storyline outline and then solo game that uh, starring these characters. So thank you once again, I cannot express what it's meant to me, uh, all the support, all the comments, all of you that are following the storyline, all the positive things that you're giving me because I started this channel because I was solo gaming in my basement and I'm like, you know what? I think it's time to share this with people. And so here we are. And uh, the reception has been enormous and enormously satisfying. And I thank you all very much for getting what I'm doing and, uh, and coming along on my journeys. So until next time, keep on rolling dice and playing games. Thank you so much. Mage Hammer out.